politics is important. Politics trumps everything. Politics is more important than anything you can think of. Because if you ignore politics, you do so at your peril. And this is why after my exile, I decided that I'm, I, I was an accidental public servant, but I'm going to be a deliberate and intentional politician. Hello, welcome to another show on Nebo TV. It's me again, your favorite presenter, Agbaje Onome. Thanks for tuning in today. In the previous episode, I talked about the biography of one of Nigeria's top politicians, the person of Tinubu. And today we're going to talk about another one, El Rufai, Nasir Hamad El Rufai. Nasir Hamad El Rufai was born 16th February 1960. He's a Nigerian politician who is the governor of Kaduna State currently in office since 2015. He was previously the Minister of Federal Capital Territory from 2003 to 2007 and the director of the Brewery of Public Enterprises. He is a founder member of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. Okay, so let's dive in into his biography proper. Nasir Hamad Erufai was born 16th February 1960 to a Fulani family in Daudawa. His father died while he was eight years old and he was pensioned through his early schooling by an uncle in Kaduna State. Erufai is married to three wives. His first wife, Hadiza Isma Erufai, is a writer and novelist. Together, they run the Yamsin Erufai Foundation, set up in honor of their daughter, who died in 2011. Erufai was educated in Barewa College. As a junior at the college, President Umaru Yaradua was the house captain of his dormitory. In 1976, he graduated at the top of his class, winning the Barewa Boys Association Academic Achievement Trophy. Erufai attended Hamadou Bello University, Zaria, where he received a bachelor's degree in quantity surveying with first-class honor. In 1984, he received a Master of Business Administration from Hamadou Bello University. He has since attended several professional and postgraduate programs, including the Georgetown School of Foreign Service of Georgetown, University of Washington, D.C., and programs on privatization and leadership. In August 2008, he received a law degree from the University of London and a master's degree in public administration from John F. Kennedy School of Government of Harvard University in June 2009. He also received the Kennedy School Certificate in Public Policy and Management, having spent 11 months as an Edward A. Masson Fellow in Public Policy and Management from July 2008 to June 2009. In 1982, he founded Aerofi and Partners, a quantity surveying consulting firm with three partners, which he managed until 1998. During the military juntas of 1983 to 1998, the firm received building and civil engineering contracts, including during the construction of Abuja, making the partners young millionaires at their early age of 20s. In addition to his practice, Aerofi had management positions with two international telecommunications companies, AT&T Network Systems, International BV, and Motorola Incorporation. In 1998, following the death of military head of state General Sani Abachar, his successor General Abdul Salami Abubakar appointed Al Rufai as an economic advisor. In this role, he worked with the World Bank and International Monetary Fund. In 1999, the military transferred power to President Ulushegun Obasanjo. 
in November 1999, Aerofi was appointed the Director of Brewery of Public Enterprises and Secretary of the National Council of Privatization, where he spearheaded the privatization of several government-owned corporations alongside Vice President Atiku Abubakar. In July 2003, he was appointed the Minister of Federal Capital Territory. During his tenure, he presided over a radical transformation of the federal capital, earlier riddled with corruption and vast deviation from the original master plan. With the establishment of the Abuja Geographic Information System, the capital became the first municipality in Nigeria with a computerized land register and information system. Along with the president and members of the economic management team, he led the reform of the Nigerian public service, which had become dysfunctional during years of military dictatorship. At various times during his tenure as minister, he oversaw the Federal Ministries of Commerce, Tours, and Interior. He also chaired several high-profile cabinet committees that led to the establishment of mortgage system in Nigeria, national ID card system for Nigeria, electric power supply improvement, and the sale of federal government real estate in Abuja. During the last days of Obasanjo administration, Nuhu Ribadu, a one-time Aerofi ally, described him as the de facto number two official, tagging him with the role of vice president, especially after the fallout between Obasanjo and his vice president Atiku Abubakar. It is believed that Obasanjo's trust and confidence in Aerofi angered vast majority of the political class, which would later prosecute him. Aerofi is a known crusader against corruption, having previously successfully exposed two senators that demanded bribes from him to his his ministerial confirmation. Many view Aerofi as a corruptible public servant who can't get difficult jobs done, especially after he ordered the demolition of the house of the chairman of the ruling party in Nigeria. However, since the end of Obasanjo's administration, Aerofi has kept a very low profile, but still remains an Obasanjo loyalist, having frequently defended the former president's policies. The administration of the president, Omaru Yaradua, appointed Aerofi to the National Energy Council in September 2007. Due to the belief that he could contribute positively to the underachieving power sector of the country. Nasir resigned the appointment in June 2008. And on 30th April and 7th May 2008, Aerofi appeared before Nigeria's Senate Committee on Federal Capital Territory to explain some exposed and corrupt actions of his administration. He attempted to justify his actions and stoutly rejected Cynic's views on the allegation that he allocated plots of land to his friends, brothers and cronies. And it was clear that many of the senators had lost properties during the restoration of Abuja by Aerofi and were therefore just out to get the pound of flesh. This led Aerofi to go into self-imposed exile in 2008 and became a vocal critic of the Umaru Yaradua administration. In 2010, he returned to Nigeria and was subsequently arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. He explained his return was in order to clear his name of corruption charges. In 2011, 
Erufai joined party politics with the Congress for Progressive Change, supporting Muhammad Buhari's campaign in the 2011 presidential elections. In 2013, Erufai was appointed Deputy National Secretary of the newly formed All Progressive Congress, APC. In 2014, Erufai declared his campaign for governor of Kaduna State, contesting the APC governorship primaries to emerge as the party's candidate for governor of Kaduna State. He went on to win the governorship election with over one million votes to defeat the incumbent governor, Mukta Ramalan Yeru, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party. In 2018, he again emerged as the APC's governorship candidate. He was re-elected on 9th March 2019, defeating his closest rival by over 200,000 votes. On May 29, 2015, Erufai was sworn in as the 22nd governor of Kaduna State. In his inaugural address, he declared that he and his deputy were cutting their allowances by half pending an improvement in the state fiscal situation. On 6 August 2015, Erufai, in one of his first acts as governor, announced that Kaduna State will adopt the Treasury Single Account Policy by 1st September of that same year. At the end of the exercise, 470 accounts belonging to different ministries, departments, and agencies were closed and a sum of 24.7 billion naira was recovered and remitted to the Kaduna State Government, TSA, with the Central Bank of Nigeria. By blocking leakages and cutting the cost of running government, it is estimated that Aerofi administration was able to save 1.2 billion naira in just two months. Aerofi also reformed the civil service in Kaduna State and reduced the number of ministries from 19 to 13 and the number of permanent secretaries from 35 to 18. In a bid to reduce the cost of governance, Erufai appointed only 13 commissioners, 10 special advisors, and 12 special assistants as against the 24 commissioners, 41 special advisors, and about 400 special assistants appointed by the previous administration. As governor, Erufai has embarked on a comprehensive education reform with the goal of revamping the moribund state of education. Erufai sacked over 22,000 unqualified primary teachers. Erufai's administration launched the school feeding program aimed at providing one free meal per day to 1.5 million pupils in public primary schools within the state. He also abolished the collection of fees and levies in public primary and junior secondary schools in Kaduna, thereby removing a financial burden of 3 billion naira from parents. On 28 March 2020, Air tested positive for COVID-19 following contact with an index case. He had also placed a curfew in Kaduna State and restricted movement to prevent the spread of the virus. On 20 August 2020, controversy arose on social media when the Nigerian Bar Association invited Governor Erufai to speak at its annual conference. Thousands of Nigerians signed a petition on change.org to have Governor Erufai's invitation revoked. The NBA succumbed to the pressure and disinvited the governor. A report by Open Bar Initiative cited eight reasons why Aerofi's invitation to the General Conference was turned down. 
Some of the reasons include his refusal to obey cut orders, in his case with Aoudou Maikori, threatening Gloria Balson, who was Maikori's lawyer, and a report by Quartz Publication Africa, which named Governor Erufai as the head of a powerful group of Nigerian governors who now regularly use security agents to arrest and intimidate journalists who dare to question their actions or attempt to hold them accountable. Erufai also granted pardon to 12 prisoners in Kaduna State, 10 of whom were nearing the end of their sentences. Some of the pardons were also granted due to age. Additionally, he reduced one prisoner's death sentence to life imprisonment. In recent years, Nasir Arafai published a widely circulating essay on Nigeria's president Umaru Yaradua, titled Umaru Yaradua, Great Expectations, Disappointing Outcomes, which for the first time revealed aspects of the president's life history, habits and statecraft, as well as the performance of the administration. The essay has become a reference point for evaluating Yavadua's administration. The essay has been serialized in several Nigerian newspapers and available on various news sites and blogs. Erufai has had various nicknames throughout his period in politics, and even before that, he's known as Giant by those close to him a reference to his small size. He's also known as Privatization Czar and more recently as Mr. Demolition. However, in 2001, Erufai has spoken a lot about the Fulani Headers issue and insecurity in Nigeria. Though Erufai had previously dialogued with bandits years ago for negotiation, he even called criminals and bandits from other countries like Mali to come to Nigeria and be compensated to drop their weapons. However, his dialogue didn't go well. So in 2020, he has said that negotiating with bandits is not the solution to the insecurity problem in Nigeria. All right, that's it on today's show. On the biography of Hamad Nasir El Rufai, the governor of Kaduna State. I hope we enjoyed the show. It has been interesting so far. Thanks for tuning in to this channel. Please, if you get to subscribe, kindly click the subscription button and notification bell to always get updates from Nebo TV. Also, follow us on our various social media handles on our Instagram page at Nebo TV and our Facebook page at Nebo Telly. My name remains Agbaji Onome, and I'm definitely gonna see you next time. So, don't go off, stay safe. God bless you, and God bless Nigeria. <music>